Hello, welcome to a session on transactions on the Algorand blockchain. Transactions form the primary interface for all dApps built on the Algorand blockchain. The main purpose of any blockchain is to deliver transactions globally. For those new to Algorand, the decentralized ledger is very simple. Blocks represent a period of time under five seconds and it has associated transactions that were executed during that time frame. Transactions are between who? Between accounts. So you have a sender and a receiver. Each account can have assets and applications. So today we're going to focus on transactions and what we'll cover is what makes up a transaction, how to read and understand them, how to create a transaction as well as how they work. There are seven types of transactions. A payment transaction is between two accounts. Key registration registers participation keys. Asset configuration creates, reconfigures, or destroys an asset. Asset transfer transfers assets between accounts. Asset freeze changes the free status of the asset. Application call allows creating, deleting, and interacting with the application. State proofs records a state proof. The image on the right is from the open source repo for Go Algorand on these transaction types. This is the main Algorand blockchain repo. These seven transaction types can be specified in particular ways that result in more granular perceived transaction types. As an example, a transaction to create an asset and destroy an asset use the same underlying asset config TX type. Distinguishing these two transactions requires knowing which combination of asset config TX fields and values result in one versus the other. This video will help explain those differences. Fortunately, the SDKs provide intuitive methods to create these more granular transaction types without having to necessarily worry about the underlying structure. However, if you are signing a pre-made transaction, correctly interpreting and understanding the structure is critical. Note the transactions shown in this video are not yet authorized and would fail if submitted to the network. See the account videos and how to authorize transactions before sending them to the network. Here's an example of a structure of a payment transaction. Each transaction type can be displayed using the goal clerk inspect command, which takes a signed or unsigned transaction file message packed uh, encoded as an input and outputs the human readable JSON object. A payment sends algos, the Algorand blockchain's native currency, from one account to another. Here we see fields for amount, fee, starting first block, genesis, which indicates the network. Here we see mainnet, genesis hash, ending last block, and note, which is uh, freeform. You can put any data structure in there that you like, limited to 1K. Also, the receiver account, sender account and the transaction type of pay. One can also visually see the transaction object in an SDK debugging session as well. And I will show this in a demo later. The SDKs provide intuitive methods to create these more granular transaction types without having to necessarily worry about the underlying structure. However, if you are signing a pre-made transaction correctly, interpreting the underlying structure is critical. To see this information, set the breakpoint on the line after the transaction was created and simply hover over the unsigned transaction variable and you will see the structure with all the fields as you see here. On key registration, the purpose of a key registration transaction is to register an account either online or offline to participate, or in other words, vote in the Algorand consensus. This is an example of an online key registration transaction. Notice the type of key reg and all the vote fields. And here is an example of an offline key registration transaction. Notice the absence of the vote field. Then we have asset configuration, which is used to create an asset, modify certain parameters of an asset, or destroy an asset. 
To transfer an asset, the receiving account must opt in at first. And here we see a field like the creator, uh, the decimal point, freeze address, manager address, and reserve address all highlighted. An asset transfer transaction is used to both opt in to receive a specific type of Algorand standard asset, transfer an ASA, or to revoke an ASA from a specific account. And here we have the asset transfer transaction to transfer an Algorand standard asset along with the amount being transferred for the particular asset ID. An asset freeze transaction is issued by the freeze address and results in the asset receiver address losing or being granted the ability to send or receive the frozen asset. Here we see the freeze flag is set to true, the freeze address, and the asset ID to be frozen along with the sender and freeze transaction type. The application transaction is used to communicate with smart contracts, and there are actually six subtypes of application transactions. Here is the application call lifecycle. You have a no-op, which is most commonly called. This is the one that you would use to call a function in the smart contract. You have the opt-in to be able to use a contract. Opt-in is only required if your contract uses local state. Anyone can still use the smart contract without opting in. You have the ability to delete an application or update an application as well as close out or clear. Close out is based on the logic. Clear you can do at any time. Also, closeout is a great way to opt out of a smart contract that has been opted in. And clear is an immediate exit from the smart contract and is successful even if the clear logic fails. In other words, the clear logic can fail, but the user is still opted out of the contract. Application call transactions may include other fields needed by the logic, such as accounts, which may require some balance checking or opt-in status, application args to pass arbitrary arguments to an application or an ABI method, foreign assets to pass ASAs for parameter checking, foreign apps to pass apps and allow state access to an external application or to call an ABI method, and the boxes parameter is used to tell the smart contract which boxes will be examined or written in a particular transaction. When an application is to be created, the oncomplete method is set to no op. No app ID is set. The approval and clear programs and schema are passed. The approval program may do additional checking during setup by checking that the app ID is equal to zero. The app's global and local state both have byte ints set to one, and the oncomplete or APAN is set to no op, which has a value of zero, so it is emitted from the output. For more info, see videos on Beaker State or the Smart Contract Overview. So here is an actual call to invoke a smart contract. The application no-op transactions make up a majority of the application call methods in practice. The logic in a smart contract will often branch to the appropriate logic given the contents of the application's uh, arguments array passed. The app ID is set to the app being called. Here it's 51. Uh, the application args contain a string of docs and an integer one. And then the accounts uh, contain the address that begins with 4RLX. And the foreign assets uh, contain the ASA ID. So that would be the APAS field. And then the foreign apps or the APFA field contains the app ID of 10. And finally, we get to state proofs. A state proof transaction is a transaction that is submitted to the network during the consensus process. These types of transactions are not submitted by individuals, but by the consensus protocol. To see how to view SDK transactions in the VS Code debugger, continue watching the Transactions Part 2 video. Thank you.